h is the most commonly occurring bigram. So, since XL is the most common in our ciphertext, it's likely that X is going to map to T. So I'm going to make that replacement, and I'm also going to replace L with H. Okay, so we have our updated ciphertext here, and I'm just noticing here that that looks like it's here. So I'm going to replace V with R, and I'm not seeing anything else popping out at me right now. So I'm going to go back to my letter frequency table, press L and hit enter. And we've already mapped I to something, we've mapped it to E. We haven't mapped E to anything though. So let's take a look at our letter frequency table again. And we see in English the second most commonly occurring letter is T. But actually we've already mapped T, you'll see here we've mapped T to X, so let's look at the third most commonly occurring, which is A. Okay, so I'm going to try mapping E here, which occurs second most common, commonly in our um, ciphertext. I'm going to map that to A. Alright, that looks interesting. So we have here at that, that looks like at that time. So I'm going to replace M with I. And I'm going to replace this Z here with an M. Now looking some more, this looks like great, so I'm going to replace Y with G. And what else do we have here? This to me looks like there were, so I'm replacing Q with W. And this looks like state, so I'm replacing R with S. What else do we have? Uh, this looks like there were two. I'm replacing S with O. And once again, in, in addition to our ciphertext being updated here, our mapping is also being updated down here, so you can always see which ciphertext character is mapped to which plaintext character. Okay, this here looks like ration, so I'm going to replace W with N. And what else do we have here? Okay, this looks like unknown. So I'm replacing the T here with U, and I'm going to replace that A with a K. Whoa, I messed up there. Let's just, okay, actually that, that shows something that you should be handling. If I didn't enter anything here on this plain text character, it gave me an error message saying invalid plain text character. It didn't crash the program. This, these are kind of things that you should be testing in your programs and making sure that your programs are able to handle. If your program goes and crashes, then you know, you're probably going to lose some marks. So you want to make sure that you test your programs thoroughly. Okay, so where was I? I was going to replace this A with a K. So replace A with K. And it looks like we're getting there. We're almost done here. Uh, this to me looks like naturalists. So I'm going to replace the P with an L. And this looks probably like of course. So J is being replaced with F and G is being replaced with C. Alright, this here looks like the word brought, so I'm replacing K with B. Uh, I see consideration down here, so I'm replacing H with D. What else do we have here? This looks probably like it's stately, so I'm replacing F with Y. Uh, scientific point of view that looks like. So C with P and O with V. Alright, we are almost done. Now this looks near one extremity. So B with an X. And what else do we have here? Uh, 
that looks like Jupiter, so N with J. And I believe, oh, there's one more here. Of course, a great, well, that looks like prize to me. So I'm going to replace U with Z. And it appears to me that we have successfully decrypted this. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of not only what your assignment output might look like, but also hopefully clarifies to you how you might go about using frequency analysis to crack a substitution cipher. So, good luck with your assignments, and have fun!